In this clip we'll talk about copy and paste within your program, some of the report options, how to print out cross-references, and memory maps or an overview of the data file. We'll start off with copy and paste. Because Logix 500 is a Windows based program, it's very easy to copy and paste parts of your program code within the same ladder or even between files. I've just got a simple file open here that's uh, got an MCR instruction in it and I felt that uh, uh, an example of taking uh, copy and paste would be to take perhaps one of the rungs out of the MCR and put it outside of it. So if we just right click the rung that we want to move and go cut to remove it and click the place where we want to place it right click again and paste and that's as easy as copy and paste within your program. Of course you can open another ladder file and copy and paste uh, rungs from that one. So let's have a look at that. In this example I've already opened another RS Logix 500 file and I just have to hit my alt tab key to toggle between them. So let's say that I want to copy this timer file from this example to the other. So again just right click copy in this case because we don't want to uh, cut it out, hit the alt tab, go to the other file, perhaps scroll down to the area I would like to put it, right click and paste. And you'll notice here that we've got an address collision, now we do need to sort those out so that's one of the things that you'll need to just go through and readdress uh, the copied uh, ladder program to your files. So we'll just leave it and fix it later and there we have very easily copied from one ladder file to another. That's a very handy feature if you do lots of work that's the same. You can have, uh, uh, we've talked about templates in other lessons, we, you could have a template of regular functions, you could just pop into new files by opening it and all you need to do is sort out the addressing. So that's a very handy feature and of course uh, right click delete will get rid of or cut will get rid of the uh, file, the runs that you don't want so just treat it as any other Windows program very easy to use copy and paste and delete you may have heard the term cross reference mentioned uh, when discussing PLC programs cross referencing is a, a method of referring to where a particular IO block is used or an I.O. address is used within your program and a cross-reference report is a handy tool for finding it. To get to the cross-reference or actually all uh, report configurations in the SLC you file report options and here we are with a dialog that's fairly comprehensive. Uh, it depends on the last setting uh, because it does remember uh, what the last user chose to select so usually I start off by uh, deselecting all uh, which means obviously nothing gets printed out at the very minimum we want our program files to be printed each time and perhaps some other choices uh, of course uh, cross reference uh, maybe the IO configuration and perhaps the data files and address symbols. So just apply that and from then on that will be your uh, standard printout. We can have a look at our selections by choosing print preview and we'll zoom in on that and here we have the IO configuration so that's basically the IO that's uh, on our rack or chassis and we can choose down here to program files and we could look at our ladder again I'll just zoom in to give you a better view of that uh, the next one data files, various data files and there's our, our output card and the next file is the inputs ok and cross reference let's have a look at that cross reference shows the instruction and the rung number it's on 
and the file number it comes from. So here we are looking at uh, the timing output of the file, uh, the file O colon two slash zero. It's located in ladder file two run zero, ladder file three run zero, and it's using an output energizer and an XIC. So you can see that if you go through the cross reference, you can find where in your program a particular instruction lives and its name. So very handy for sorting complex programs. Okay, so if you like you could print that from here or you can close that and drop out and go back to your ladder file. So very handy. Cross reference, remember to get there, file, report options, choose your report options and you can have a look at what you've got by choosing print preview and magnify it a bit to go and have a look. So we'll close that and that's uh, report options and cross referencing. The final part of this clip is about uh, the memory mapping. Memory mapping has changed somewhat, particularly with the introduction of IEC compliant software where we have a project tree rather than uh, DOS based programming. And the traditional memory map is a little different than it's uh, shown uh, in the modern PLC. I've got a couple of documents open here on the desktop that we'll have a look at if you like. So first of all go for a um, uh, an older memory map, perhaps of the more traditional uh, type. So I'll just open that and I've just got a generic ma memory map here rather than uh, an SLC memory map because it's a little different and I'll go to the SLC memory map in a moment. But here we have a table that shows us the data area which is really describing the particular data area or data use within the PLC and there's some symbolic names here which will be referred to uh, further on in the documentation. Uh, you'll recognise one here, uh, timer counter areas, so there's an area set aside for timer counters and it's data memory area TC0 to TC127, so that tells us we've got 128 counters in this particular PLC. We've got a data memory area which is uh, our data files and that ranges from different types of data, so you'll see there's read only, read write, error files, so there's a whole range of particular data files for various different uses. Uh, on the right hand side it's the function of the particular data memory error is described and it was so that you used to know, used to have to know exactly where the memory was in each PLC. It's a little less complex these days and so let's have a look at the SLC memory map. Okay, I've just taken this screen out of one of the uh, SLC uh, downloadable PDFs from Alan Bradley's website and here we have the memory map of the SLC processor. A lot more straightforward than the previous example you'd have to say. Uh, here we have our file number. Uh, the, the, the standard file setup is 0 through to 8 or 9 depending on the PLC type and then user defined is 10 through 255 so we can have 0 to 255 data files and of course that's going to be limited on the, num on the, on the amount of memory we have in the PLC but file number 0 is set aside for output images and so on and you'll recognize uh, 0, uh, 1 two, three, four, and you'll recognize these through your program. So you'll be used to seeing uh, these various data files in your program. So let's go and have a look at the software now. And here's our memory map as you're used to seeing it. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Recognize those from the memory map. There they are. 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So we can look at our data file memory area by just double clicking the file and opening it up. And here we can look at the memory that's laid out for a particular part of the PLC. And that's the output data file or memory map if you like to call it that. Our input and these will describe only the things that are connected to your PLC and here we have say the timer data file and these are the timers that have been used in your program. 
One thing about the SLC is that it defines memory only as you use it. So it's memory efficient compared with the older uh, memory map type of PLC where the memory is defined and used at the beginning of your program. So you are limited to the number of timers and counters you can have, for instance. Whereas in the SLC, it's a memory defined allocation, so the more timers and counters you can have, the less other things you can have, such as binaries or integer words. Integer words will be something you've been talking about. Uh, it's something that, that, that we'll venture further into in future lessons but the memory map is decided in input, output, timers, counters and integers as well as binary files and they're all set aside in Word format. Now Word format is 16 bits in the case of the SLC so a, a word in a SLC PLC is 16 bits so in the binary file here you can see laid out is Word 0 bit 0 through to bit 15 so there's a 16 bit word for us in the integer files it's slightly different the basic setup is a word a 16 bit word which we can enter a large number into so the radix or the display is in decimal so when you're addressing an integer file it's referred to generally as n70 and so on whereas when you're referring to a binary file you refer an address to bit level more commonly so those are two terms that uh, will become more and more common in, in your usage and although I can change the display here from decimal to binary to show the integer file in its bit format the most common way and widely used way is to show it in decimal because that's where will hold values and certainly in future lessons we'll be using those integer files to manipulate and store our data. So when we're referring to the memory map we can think of integer words as being 16-bit words and binary words as being a bit. When we refer to the memory map we refer to binary as being displayed in bit format and integer in, as being displayed in word format and the same also applies for floating point displayed in word format as you can see there control a little bit more like a timer so although we have a display that looks like one word it's actually more than one word because it has some status bits and it also then has other values such as their length and position and you'll notice that they are decimal numbers so really the uh, data file R is made up of three words so the one element the data file R6 is made up of three words one word holds the status bit one word holds the length and one word holds the position so let's now have a look at the timer data file which has the same features so if we just expand that out a bit so we can have a look at it so the first one in the row there you'll notice that we have the status for enabled timer timing and done we have the time base then we have the preset and the accumulator so there's one word holds the accumulator one word holds the preset another word holds the time base and the status bits so again there's a, th a three word device makes up this one element so the one element one timer element is made up of three words the same applies for a counter we have a similar situation where we have status bits let's have a look at C50 we have status bits a few more status bits in the counter element a preset and accumulator so we have one word for the accumulator one word for the preset and another word for the status bits now you may be thinking what happens to the other parts of those status bits well they're just not user addressable so the only part of that status word is available to the user is the one shown in the data file so that's a good summary of 
word and bit data and memory in the SLC.